Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to be here and to watch my videos, to support the channel, to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, all the things. I really appreciate that from you guys. It really means a lot to me. Today, we're going to be talking about a knife that I've owned for a number of years, probably close to a decade, that has uh, been a major part of my field slash camp knife rotation for a long time. It's a knife that I love. It's a knife that you know, when I first saw it, I had to have it. So that's the Knives of Alaska Bush Camp. Now, I have modified mine in some ways over the years that I've had it. Uh, as you can see from the sheath here, she has seen a lot of use. And uh, I'm going to get into all the details of that and why the sheath looks the way it does. And obviously, we're going to talk about the knife itself. So uh, I'm really excited to share this knife from my collection with you guys because i think it's a knife that uh you will not only love but i think it's a knife that you should consider getting if uh you spend a lot of time in the outdoors so before we get started on the knife review just wanted to let you guys know in case you didn't catch in my last video i have started an instagram page it's marshfoot outdoors all one word just go over there to instagram and look that up i'll put the link down below as well uh, i've been sharing all kinds of photos there of my outdoor activities hunting fishing camping so that's going to be kind of where i share that type of content instead of putting it here on the youtube channel uh, only because it just makes it a little bit easier for me and it allows me to keep the youtube channel focused on the gear reviews the knife reviews and content like that so head on over there subscribe to the in, uh, or join the Instagram Instagram channel, whatever the hell you call it or whatever you do. And I'll, you'll be sure to enjoy that content as well. Um, also, don't forget, as always, you can get 10% off Odin Wolf knives by using either my affiliate link, which I'll put below. Use that affiliate link, automatically get 10% off Odin Wolf knives, or you can use the code MARSH10 at checkout on Odin Wolf's website to also automatically get 10% off Odin Wolf knives. So be sure to take advantage of that if you would like. Uh, so, all right. The Knives of Alaska Bush Camp. So as I said, this is a knife that I have owned for about 10 years. Uh, this is a knife that's made in the United States. It is a big, just robust field slash camp knife. They call it the Bush Camp. Um, Right out of the gate, you can see if you have one of these knives or if you look one up online, um, obviously you can see that my sheath has seen a lot of use and it's got some modification. This is something that I end up doing to a lot of my knives that come in a leather sheath. Basically what I do is I drill a series of eighth inch uh, holes all the way around the sheath with a drill bit. And then I run bank line through it nice and tight. And then I just kind of burn it and mushroom it off there at one end or the other. And for one, I think it kind of looks cool. I think it kind of gives it like an old school kind of like pioneer or like Native American kind of look. Um, but it helps reinforce the stitching on these leather sheaths that eventually leather sheaths, they just fail. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast, especially when you're a lot of moisture. You might not be able to pick it up on camera here, but there on the uh, bevel part of the blade on where the sheath would, where the knife would sit in the sheath, you can see where I've lost some stitching there. And that was part of the reason that I did this. This is a, ho a high quality sheath, guys. Uh, it, there's nothing, I'm not knocking the sheath, but, you know, I use this knife a lot and the sheath just, it just, you know, started to take a beating. But by just doing a little bit of modification, 10 years later, here it is still going. Um, I basically made my own dangler here with a piece of 550 cord and just one of those like cheap quote unquote non load bearing carabiners. Uh, this thing, you know, it used this carabiner used to be black. I mean, you can see where it's just worn right off silver. I just, what I like is I'll just hook this right to my belt loop or my, uh, um, belt itself on my pants and the knife now becomes a dangler. And I like dangle sheaths. That was one thing I liked about the BPS adventure that I talked about was, you know, I like danglers. But if I want to put it, and you've got multiple options here for belt carry, depending on the size of your belt. And I like that. For a leather sheath, you got a lot of options. You've got this big old loop for a big giant belt. And then you've got a smaller one there 
for smaller belts. So a lot of options. So just good American made. I don't know if it'll pick it up there, but you can see that it says made in the USA on the back of the sheath. So that's enough about the sheath. Let's get to the knife because this thing is an absolute beast, you guys. Um, you know, when it comes to kind of like, boy, could I have a do-it-all field knife, but could it also end up, if I had needed it in a pinch to be a self-defense knife, what, you know, could I, could I use it without it being overly tactical guy? Um, you know, this knife fits the bill. This knife is, I believe, 14 inches overall. And no, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said 14 inches. That was dumb. 10 inches, 10 and a quarter inches overall. And you've got about a six inch blade on this knife. So, uh, it's right in that kind of perfect size knife length that I like from about eight to 10 inches for a field knife, for a knife that it's not way oversized, but it's big enough to do those camp chores that you need to do and that you do around camp from cutting your food to batoning firewood to skinning out an animal if you so choose. Now, there are some features about this knife that some people may not love. And what may jump out to you right away is the grip, the handle, right? The finger grooves. Some people absolutely hate finger grooves on the handle of their knife. Personally, I like them. I like them a lot. For one, I, I love reference points on things. I don't have to look. When you pull this knife out of the sheath, if you're, if you're not looking at it, there's no question in my mind, once it's in my hand, which direction the business side of the blade, which direction it's pointing, the cutting edge, right? I know. Why? Because I've got these contact points. I've got these touch points. I've got these reference points. Now, a lot of knives have some sort of reference point, but when it's something that's, you know, as exaggerated as finger grooves like this, there's no mistaking in my mind which direction the blade's pointing when I pull this out of the sheath or, you know, if I, if I drop it and I need to try to pick it up without looking or something like that. And I love that. But I love the grip that you get. And I love how they've extended a nice, big, deep finger choil right up into the bottom portion of the blade. I really like finger choils because I like how they allow me to choke up onto the blade if I want to do a pinch grip over the bottom and the top for basically turning this into, instead of a 10 inch knife, it's essentially now a six inch knife. And I've got a lot more control over that blade now. And I've got that nice deep finger choil that's going to protect my finger, not allow it to slide up on the cutting edge of the blade or anything like that but it allows me to choke up on this knife in such a way that I'm going to be able to do nice, good field work with it, carving, feather sticking, whatever it may be. You know, to me, this knife, this, guys, this knife is made in the United States, and this knife only costs $140. This is a tough, robust, made in the USA, D2 tool steel knife for $140. You can see that it's got all the literature there on the side. Alaskan Bush Camp Knife D2 Tool Steel made in the USA, right? Not gaudy. All the information you need without being over the top. And then on the other side, you've got their logo there, which is a Alaskan brown bear. And it says Knives of Alaska. Now, this, D, this D2 tool steel on this particular knife, I don't know what their process is. I don't know, you know, when, when uh, Knives of Alaska, when they make their knives, what they do. But this has just been a phenomenal knife. This has been phenomenal steel for D2. I, and I love D2. It's one of my favorite steels on a knife blade. But maintenance has been extremely low on this. I have not had to really worry about rust issues too much. Now, I don't know if you can notice or not, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but 
as in my fashion that I seem to do with so many knives, I broke the, t the tip of this knife at one point along the way in my life. And you can see where I've kind of had to reprofile it on the work sharp. This tip extended out a, a, a good, probably maybe uh, an eighth inch more, and it was very pointy, and it was very fine. And to me, that's no knock against the knife at all, because just if you use your knife and you've got a really fine tip like that, you're going to break it. Like, you're going to break it at some point. It's just going to happen. You're going to drop the knife. You're going to get into a piece of bone on an animal. Uh, something's going to happen, and that little tiny fine tip's going to break. Didn't bother me one bit, and that is it. In 10 years of heavy use on this knife, that is the only thing. That is the absolute only thing that's happened to this knife is that little bit of the tip is broken. Now, Knives of Alaska, they call this grip the scales here because obviously this is a full tang knife. You've got that tang that runs all the way through the entire length of the knife. They call this their sure grip. And essentially, it's just it's, it's a rubberized material. And you can see I've got a lot of wear on mine there. But it's held up very, very well over the years. And I put this piece of sailing cord because if I ever want to, like, you know, really get a good, it allows me to get a good tight grip in there and really have great retention on the knife depending on what I'm doing. So you don't have to do that, obviously, but I, I do like it. Nice, good quality brass bolsters that have stood the test of time. I have batoned the hell out of this knife. I've batoned Osage Orange, Oak, you name it. This knife has batoned some of the hardest hardwoods that you could possibly uh, imagine. And it's, it's been amazing. Blade retention as far as, uh, you know, the uh, sharp, sharpness, retention of a uh, sharp cutting edge after doing work. This knife holds a really excellent edge for a very long time. As long as you keep it sharp and you don't let it get ridiculously uh, dull like any D2 blade, you're going to be able to keep that edge maintained with a little decent ceramic sharpener like I do. Now, if you look at the blade profile here and you look at the grind, you've kind of got a, uh, it kind of reminds you of a Scandi grind. Um, it's it's kind of to me like a hybrid Scandi hollow flat grind. You know, it's kind of a little bit of everything, which I really like. It makes a good, just really nice utility blade. This knife's really good actually for uh around camp for food food processing and food prep i've used it a ton for that but then it can go right from that right out into the woods and you know chop off small limbs baton really whatever you want it to do this knife has over the years has done everything that i've asked it to do and it hasn't bucked at anything along the way just a, a hearty good american made quality d2 tool steel knife that has a great reputation that is not going to let you down it's not going to fail you and if you want a good quality uh, you know it's not a custom it's a production knife but uh, if you just want yourself a good quality american made knife for just north of a hundred bucks uh you know th this is in my opinion a hard knife to beat um not from knives of alaska's website now, they do have one that has a stag handle. That one's $270. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you want to get a little fancy-pantsy with it, you could. But I actually just like the utilitarian aspect of the Sure Grip rubber. I, I like that a lot, actually. This knife just, this knife just has a very, um, you know, pro uh, partisan kind of proletariat feel to it, right? This is like, this knife feels like it's a, a knife for the common, simple man, right? You want something that's reliable. You want something that's sharp. You want something that's going to get the job done. You want something that can do a multitude of tasks out in the field. You want something that if you hand this knife to someone else, they're going to be like, wow, this is a quality knife. They're not going to like you're not bringing out some little, you know, dinky $20 Amazon knife. And Lord knows I've done plenty of reviews on those. But you can certainly feel the difference. And this is a knife that you wouldn't be embarrassed to put in someone's hand no matter what they were carrying. Uh, it's just that kind of knife, just simplistic, bomb-proof kind of simple man knife. Um, so, as I was saying, Bush uh, Knives of Alaska, they call this their sure grip. They say the Bush Camp knife is a large 10.5-inch long full tang 
um, 0.14 inch thick knife with a six inch drop point blade, which you can see the drop point there, which I love drop points. I think drop point is about the best, uh, most useful blade profile in a field knife or in just about any kind of knife, to be quite honest. Uh, the handle is our black rubberized sure grip. Now this doesn't really look black to me. This kind of looks like navy blue, but uh, that doesn't really matter. So the knife is designed for rugged bush camp field dressing and cook shack duties. And I, I that's like 100%. It's, it's, you know, it's got a foot in every part of what your camp could possibly throw at it. Cooking, whatever. Chopping, dicing. Says, uh, simple, straightforward design provides user with a practical knife large enough for any outdoor camp and field dressing task. The blade steel features our Hunter's non-glare matte finish. And you can see that. Uh, and, and I like that. And I think that's part of the reason why this knife has done so well with weather resistance is because it does have that matte finish to it. And it kind of just feels like it's got just a natural, uh, you know, resistance to the elements already built right into the knife there. So um, I, I couldn't be happier with this knife. And I think you will too. Now, it's got a nice sharp 90 degree spine on it. And I've got to be honest with you, I've had this knife for so long. I personally can't remember. I believe that I took my Dremel tool and I uh, sharpened up the spine to make it more of a 90 degree spine. Because if I recall correctly, and it does look like I've got some tooling marks on the top of this. And uh, I don't know if it's going to pick up there. Don't quote me on it. I can't remember if you get one and you don't have a successful ferro rod strike. Uh, it's not that the knife can't do it. It's just if I remember correctly, I don't believe it had a really, really good sharp 90 degree spine. So somewhere deep in the vestiges of my memory, I remember taking my Dremel and just lightly sharpening up that spine a little bit. And I'll show you why, because this thing will really throw sparks, as you can see there on our ferro rod test. I mean, she absolutely showers sparks. So I love that about this knife. So there you go. There's our ferro rod test. I mean, just, you know, throw sparks like no one's business there. I love that. I love that look on there. Looks like I was like defending, uh, like knocking uh, Star Wars blasters like a Jedi, def deflecting them off with my knife. So um haven't sharpened this knife in a long time just kind of i it's just kind of one of those knives where you know it just keeps cutting and you just keep using it and every now and then you hit it on the ceramic rod or whatever so i don't know how it's going to perform here on the cut test but you know not too bad it's tearing a little bit there but you gotta remember this is a knife that, not great, not super great, but heh, obviously she needs some attention on my end because my cut test is not doing so well. Yeah, so cut test leaves a little bit desired on this particular one. Hey, there we go. Not so bad. Only because I have not sharpened this knife in a very, very long time. But even though I haven't sharpened it in a long time, I mean, we're talking probably, honestly, I don't know. It could be a couple years since I've sharpened this knife and I just keep using it and using it. So for uh, not touching it up in a very long time, still slice through some paper uh, better than some brand new knives that I get. But all right, guys. Well, that is the Knives of Alaska Bush Camp in D2 Tool Steel. If you are an outdoorsman, hunter, fisherman, camp, deer hunt, whatever, and you've been in the market for a good, strong, robust, American-made, high-quality knife, quality materials that are not going to break your budget, but you also can have that pride of having a good USA made knife on your hip. Hey, check it out. Don't hesitate to check out the Knives of Alaska Bush Camp or really any of their knives 
that uh, blow your skirt up, if you will. So, all right, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. This is, like I said, one of my most favorite knives from my collection, one of my most used, beloved field companions who's uh, been there through a lot of adventures with me. So, all right, guys, that's all I got on this one. I appreciate being here. Go ahead and check me out over on Instagram. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. And until the next time, I will see you on the Happy Hunting Grounds. Thanks.